Hello, this is Robert Messina, and I'm here to tell you to talk about one more time. I have already spoken in videos like this twice before. The first one was how far the stars, how far away are they? I don't believe they're as far away as they tell us. And in that video, I do mention my belief that each 24-hour day of God's creation day, each one, and there are six of them that we know of, was a thousand years for each hour or 24,000 years per day times six is 144,000 years and the evening and the morning of the sixth day still has not yet happened. We are still in the sixth day. We are yet to have our rest in God. And that day, like I said, it does not have an evening and the morning or the seventh day. And that's because I believe that seventh day goes on forever and forever, kind of like how it's described. There yet remains a rest for the people of God. Labor, therefore, to enter into his rest. I don't believe he has rested yet. He is still forming you and I, men and women, into his image. And his image is being faithful, being loving, being kind, being merciful, God is love, and that is his image. He is forming within us. We are born again by his seed, and we become children of the ever-loving God who created all things and who has told us about his creation. And he has told us that his creation week, everything that he has made, Everything that you see was made between the Father and the Son. They had made all things. There was not one thing. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And there was not one thing made that is made that was not made by Him. Everything. Every atom in the universe, and there are millions and billions and trillions of them. And he made the earth and the sea and the land and all of the green trees and the green grass, the vegetation, he made on the third day. And he made light on the fourth day. He made the great light, the greater light to rule the day, and he made the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. And he made, he made the stars also. By the way, he made the stars also. And he made them to be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And I go on another topic, and I do want to digress just to mention it because it is a very important topic that is neglected, that is n passed over, that has been abused by many people that think they understood the gospel in the stars. And they, they, maybe they understood some of it, but they, they just, there's so, much, there's so much to it. There's more to it than what they told you. And uh, that's, my call, that's really my calling. But this area, this area where I'm in right now of how far away they are is also my area of calling because I don't see... I see creation, um, creation scientists trying to dispute the cosmology, cosmologists, mainstream science that is uh, telling us that there was a big bang. And now they're saying there was even a bigger bang because that started the expansion. And the expansion or the inflation uh, and 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 they just keep going on and on. And, and now there's now there's black holes and dark matter and dark energy, things you can't see, things that don't make sense. Gravity, 
pulling light. Uh, I mean, I, I don't understand it. It it doesn't it does not make sense. Uh, and that that famous experiment uh, when there was that eclipse and and Einstein predicted that there would be a a, a shift uh, because and he said it was a shift because of the gravitational pull. Um, that could be very easily explained in a Fresnel lens that goes around. If there was a light bending with that, as as I saw in one of the Thunderbolt space science um, electric universe news. One of those, I think it was Thomas Hall that that uh, narrated that one. Um, but that that Thunderbolt project um, and the space news that comes out of that 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 stars are basically uh, in our, a plasma in within plasma filaments that are intertwined with um, Birkeland currents that are ions, uh, positive and negative ions going in both directions up and down this, this wound up corded pipe, which is thick and which is very expansive and very, very, very strong in elect electric uh, forces. And when they go into that arc mode, that is when you see the star, okay? You see stars amongst the clouds of plasma, and sometimes those clouds of plasma go into a glow mode, and that is the different cloud-like nebulae you see in the Hubble images. It is a very, the, the universe, the stars are very, very uh, awesome. There's only one word to describe all those stars and all, all of the, the glory that is in the, the nighttime sky. And when we look up close, it even gets more and more awesome. I still remember uh, many years ago, a, uh, a woman in the Bible study, when we were talking about how when Jesus comes back and he will be our light and there will be no night. And she was sort of almost disappointed because she says how she enjoys seeing the, the nighttime sky. And uh, I still remember that because I really had no answer for her because in a way, it, 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 is, it, it will be like we're missing something, you know, without stars and, and the moon and, and all of the, the nice part of the nighttime that... God does show his handiwork in. Um, but I think there was no answer to that because I has not seen nor ear heard the things in store for them that love God. And um, I guess that's the best answer because there's no way we can we can say, well, we won't have stars, but we'll have, and we don't know what that is. But we do, from what we know about God, how good he is and how awesome he is, and we can see that from his creation, that it will be good. And it'll be worth, it'll be worth whatever we go through, the suffering of this world cannot compare to the glorious uh, fortune that he, we're going to receive from him. But the explanations are not so awesome. The explanations are not so good. They're not so great. They don't make sense. They are wrong. And why am I saying they're wrong? I'm saying they're wrong because I know that this book, the Bible, is true. And I know that um, there was a, a day one and there was a beginning of time and the, for us, there was a beginning of time. There, God is infinite. There's no, there is no time in his world. Infinite and time don't mix. Don't, do not mix. Okay? Infinity and time don't mix. Time has a beginning and it has an end. It's not going to go on forever. There's going to be an end of time, which if you read Revelation, uh, the sound of the last trump, talks about an angel lifting up his hand and swears that there'll be no time, 
time will be no longer. And thereon we go and we continue in his presence, because that's he comes at the sound of the last trump. And we're in his presence and in his infinite time. That that video that I have that I didn't put the I didn't make the video, but I I I uh, read the English subtitles for for people, and the video with of Nathan going uh, being clinically dead for fifteen minutes, and he ha he happens to be in the presence of all that goes on in Gan Eden, in the in the Garden of Eden in Paradise, where judgment of souls goes and he described the judgment of souls and he said that every single second of his life so he's a he was 15 years old he was clinically dead 15 minutes each minute represented one year of his life so do you see how 15 years went by and he said every single second of his life went by and was was counted and weighed and talked about again again knowledge knowledge the not and the knowledge that he gained in the in those 15 minutes was impossible but nothing is impossible with god and god put all of that knowledge he he, he didn't even know about gog gog of magog chapter 38 ezekiel that he would be buried in the land of israel he was told that up there and that that Armageddon has already begun, and, and he said it began September fifteenth, September eleventh, nineteen uh, uh, twenty year twenty fifteen, which was just before he went up there, I think. Yeah, just before he went up there, it had already begun. So, so that is such an important prophecy because. It's telling all of us we don't have much time left. According to him, it all starts with one big, <laughs> big bang. It's, it starts, the end starts with a big bang. But the big bang, I, I, go, I don't want to digress too much because if the, that's a very important thing. But I'm trying to get, get, to, to get understanding out here that time in God's world and time in our world are not the same those don't, do not have to be the same thing. And Peter, Peter says, a thousand years with God is as one day. And one day is as a thousand years. Now, I, I'm saying that one of God's creation days, instead of 24 hours, it was 24,000 years. All right? And I have reasons for that. And, um, and, if, and, and if I'm right about those reasons, it means that we have less than six minutes left of the sixth day, and if if you if if things are like clockwork and they usually are, God can of course increase or decrease, uh, or, or or stop. He can stop the sun if he stops the sun, and and, and he did stop the sun by the way, <clears throat> and and I meant I go a little more deeper into the stopping the sun. I think it was the second in the second uh, video. The first video is called How Far Are the Stars? And the second video is The Battle of the Books. And The Battle of the Books is the battle between the Bible and the cosmology textbook. And the, the heart of that battle is how far away the stars are. That's the heart of that battle. And again, I, I, I see the science, the science creationists try to defend the six-day creation, I don't mind so much that they accept that the six-day creation as 24-hour days. And I don't see how they could see the, the description in Genesis of, of Adam, the creation of Adam Eve. It says, it says in, in, chap, in chapter 1 that... Um, Male and female made he them. So all of that, it's in the first 15 minutes of the first video. Uh, I, you know, I'm trying to condense this because I can go on and on. Same, I, and hopefully I don't say the same thing twice and, and, and three times. Um, 
But again, oh, I, oh, I, that's right. I was talking about um, the, the the scientists, the the creation scientists. I haven't heard one of them even come close to even to come close to saying that they're not as far away as the scientists say, as the cosmologist uh, science says. They're not as far away. I mean, they try to they try to um, talk about uh, that the speed of light changed, or they say that clocks change, or the speed uh, from from the star to here is different than than it is when it starts to. Be, uh, they say they say all kinds of things, but they agree with the distance, and they try to get the. Speed and they know they know it's true that the star can possibly be that far away. I mean, they don't say it like that. They say that it it, it's, it couldn't possibly be that the starlight that we see now happened 14 billion years ago. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. God turns the light on 14 and a half billion years ago, and he creates the man to see it basically today after... After all of those years, uh, let's let's have some logic. Let's be reasonable. Come, let us reason together. Why do they have to be so far? Why? Because, and and the reason why they are so far is there's a couple. There are some assumptions that are being made that are wrong assumptions. They're wrong. Basically, there's two ways to tell how far away it is. One is measure it with trigonometry and using the parallel, what they call the parallax method. And I, I went over this in the second video. I went through and I did the calculation. There's only a, a handful of stars that they can use the parallax method with. And the closest one is... Uh, uh, Proxima Centauri. That's the one I did my calculation on. And they say it takes over four light years to get to us. The light that we see now shined from Proxima Centauri over four light years away. Now, if you say that the Earth does not spin and that it does not orbit the Sun and that the Sun orbits the Earth and that the difference from our, our point of observation between the summer and the winter, um, which is, is now only going to go from the, the Arctic Circle to the bottommost latitude of the Antarctic Circle. I mean, th that's only about 8,000 miles, maybe uh, 9,000 miles difference. All right? Instead of... Not, it's not 93 million, it's uh, 93 plus 93. It's 186 million miles difference. And in the trigonometry base of the, of, uh, of, of the calculation. And, and that, re that relates to a big, big difference. So I, when I calculated it, it was eight minutes for the sun to get, sun's light to get here. And that one was about, 80 minutes, about 10 times. For, so it's about 10 times further out than the sun. There's a big difference, right? And that's the closest because they're talking about the furthest over 13 billion light years away. And I'm going to get into the calculation. There's no way they can see that star out that far. And I know that they're going to call it, they're not going to call it a star. They're going to call it a galaxy. I know that. But there's a fallacy in that thought because galaxy, a galaxy is light spread out by thousands, according to them, thousands of years and millions of years, the light is spread out. Uh, according to mainstream science, we're between the outer edge and the, mid and the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. And we don't see the brightness of many suns when we look at it. We see little stars. So why would, you know, if it was way, if the Milky Way was way, way, way far away, 
What makes you think it would be as bright as many suns? It isn't. So that's that. The fact that it's a galaxy doesn't me mean that it's much, 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 much brighter than just one single star. That's a wrong thought. And so they, you can't come say the brightness that you see from a galaxy, the brightness of all of them together. It's not. It is not. They are spread out. I'm going to sort of like leave that later on. But I do want to plead. I want to plead with people out there, both Christians and non-Christians that, that are listening to this. Now, to the Christians, I get, I get a lot of, so what? So who cares? We know God's true. We know the Bible's true. Who cares? Please, it matters. And why does it matter? Because there's no way a star could be that far away. Basically, there's no way a star could be that far away, as far away as they're telling you it is, and come into, and, and come into our sight. It's only a six-day creation. Those stars were made, uh, you can even say they were at the beginning of the fourth day, and according to the way I think, the beginning of the fourth day was 72,000 years ago. Now, the way other, other Christians think, it was 6,000 years ago, plus three days. And, as, and to the cosmologists, pleading with you to have an open mind because you're bucking, you're standing amongst men that think they know better than your heavenly Father who does love you. You may not believe in him now. You may not know him now. You may think that this is the Bible is just a fairy tale. You may think you know better. You may think, I don't know what I'm talking about. You may think that science is not wrong. The scientists tell us things. They're not liars. Uh, I would have to beg, beg, beg with you. The, in fact, the very people, the very people that are telling you, for example, NASA. And NASA's the one that sent the, the men up to the moon, isn't it? Aren't they the ones? Didn't they spearhead that project, sending the men onto the moon? They took pictures. They took film. And you look at the film, and I don't have to get into too many things, but you see the light from the sun. You see the, that light going towards each other as if it was in a studio, uh, in a photograph studio. It wasn't, you know, those were uh, bright lights that they set up for the for the picture on the stage. I mean, that's that's what it looked like. And I didn't make this up. They, they pointed it out on, on all the videos. You see, moon hoax. There's plenty of information on the hoax of the moon, the moon shots. The, the, the waving of the flag, the, the blowing in the wind. In the wind? And, and he, he actually makes a, a, a video where they make a video of him standing on the earth and, and putting a feather and a, and, a, and a rock and letting them fall and see, and they fall at the same speed. So he's showing, they're showing you that there is no atmosphere. They're showing you that, which is what we think. We think there's no atmosphere. And they also have the, where the, the flag wave in the wind. Uh, no, they, they they wish they could they wish they could take that one out, but they can't. Everybody saw it already. It's out there already. They'll explain it away. They will explain it away. And I'm not. This is this video is not about. Uh, I'm not here to. I'm just trying to tell you that men will lie to you, and the reason why they lie to you is basically Satan is a liar and the and the father thereof. We are battling against not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. All right? We, we're, we're battling against the, the liar and the father of lies who is going to try to deceive you and all of us into believing a lie, and that lie that he's trying to make sure stands 
which is a, which is one of his strongholds, is that those stars are so far away. There's no way the Bible can say if they were they were made in six days. Uh, what I'm saying is now you're trying to contradict your Father in heaven. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless you become as a child. When your father in, on earth tells you that the earth spins and you, you look at him and you say, and you say, wow, what do you mean it spins? It doesn't, it doesn't look like it spins. Oh, but it's so big. That's because it's so big that it doesn't, we don't even notice it. I mean, that's what fathers tell their children today. And they've been doing that ever since Galileo for 500 years. But that is not really true. It's not true. Your father in heaven wouldn't tell you that thing. What your father in heaven tells you is the earth cannot be moved. Okay, Psalm 19, verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. The firmament is where the stars e exist, and the clouds. The handiwork that he, all of the artwork that he does every day, that's his handiwork. All of his, and also the brilliance of the stars and if we didn't have so much uh light uh, incandescent light we would see a lot more stars and a lot more awesomeness number two day unto day utter speech consider the lilies night unto night shows knowledge consider the knowledge of the gospel of the stars there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So he made a tent or a tabernacle for the sun. The sun that is the greater light that rules the night, the day. He, it has a place it has a home, and the universe that we see and the stars all about is his, is that sun, is the house of the sun, and all of those stars are providing the electricity that goes through the sun that that help it glow. It's like a big light bulb. The electric universe has a lot more on that. The Thunderbolt project. Which as, uh, verse 5, which as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. So he comes out of his chamber, which is the darkness, you know, and in the morning he comes up and he runs that race all around. Verse 6, his going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. There is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And that's the reason why that cosmic microwave background, the temperature is not absolute zero. They all have just a slight amount of temperature. And the circuits of the sun happen to be where, where the sun tra traverses the most those are the points in the cosmos that are, are slightly hotter, have a slight amount of more thermal energy. Now, they are very, very far. They're out to the distant. Those, uh, I don't know if they're atoms or what they are. It's, I, it could be just a frozen deep, but they're exhibiting a temperature, the very end edge of everything that we know as mass has an edge and it has a temperature. It's almost zero, absolutely nothing, no heat, but it does have a little bit. And it says, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. 
to those little molecules out there, whatever they are, get heated from the sun. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. With a simple guy like me, I become wise because he makes me wise, because he wants to make me wise, because I get questions and I ask him. Nothing about me is about him. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure enlightening the eyes again i beg the all of the minds out there that lean and follow the nonsense that the cosmology textbooks put out they put out a lot of things that are just not right dark matter dark energy black holes big bang um expansion Bigger bang, um, stretching of space, stretching of time, um, reducing time. Uh, it's that far away because we see a Doppler shift. Why can't that red shift that you see be intrinsic to the, 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 uh, the stellar object that you see, to be a part of its nature? Or Holt and Arp thought it was intrinsic it was an intrinsic character of the stellar object that you see and he was the one who pointed out the fallacy of the the doppler shift of how fast it's going how how it's going far away um of course he pointed out that you have a filament and he has a couple not just one example he saw many examples of this where you have a stellar object uh, and uh, usually a ciphered galaxy, a very excited galaxy, and he uses the term galaxy too. I think they're all stars. They're all just stars. There's no, there's no galaxy. There's, there's no galaxy. So if there's no galaxy, there's no, no sense in even talking about the lights that you see. That and the, the, the lights that you see are stars, or they could be a planet like, like Saturn or and Jupiter, or and um, they could be. Mars that reflect like the moon reflects the light. You know, it's not like the sun, which is just like a light bulb uh, where, where electricity flows through it. But anyway, if if the stellar object has a a redshift of so much, and the filament that connects another stellar object had that stellar object has another redshift, and there's a a, a star within the filament that has another redshift, and they're all connected, then they can't all be traveling away from us at the same, you know, with at different speeds. They have different redshifts. They can't be traveling away from us at different speeds. It's sort of like a balloon. You know, you see a balloon, and how fast does a balloon float in the wind? I don't know, about four miles an hour maybe, one mile an hour fluctuates and how fast uh, can can my can my pickup go 60 miles an hour yeah 60 miles an hour okay if i tied the balloon onto my antenna and i drove 60 miles per hour how fast is the balloon going 60 miles an hour now balloons don't go 60 miles an hour oh yes it does if it's tied to my my car it does well that's what I'm saying. If it's tied to the car, it's got to. If it's the object is tied to one another, they all have to be going the same speed, regardless of how fast they usually go. So you point that he he pointed that out, and you know what happened to him? They took his telescope away, and they de de demoted him. And he he had. I think he went to Europe, and he finished he finished up his his uh, astronomy ca career in Europe. I'm not sure because I don't really fully track. I don't retain that kind of knowledge of what happened to him. I did read it. And um, Seeing Red is the Thunderbolts um, promoted video, YouTube video for Halt and Arp. And you get more about that in there. But he points it, you, you point it out to them and they ignore, not, they ignore it and they demote you. That's the kind of people they are. Because if they took away the Doppler shift as not being a measurement of how far away the stars are, and 
the all you'd have left is the parallax, and there's almost no stars that do have ability to, to measure a parallax. And you took away the fact that the Earth does not orbit the sun. You took that away from them, and you can't have that 186 million miles spread that they use in the calculation. It wouldn't be as far away as they tell you it is. And, uh, and it doesn't have to, you know, a star can have a, a lesser bl brightness. If it's not so far away, it could be a lot less bright than what that has to be in order to be as far as away as they tell you. And um, let's go over the, I'm going to go over the math now. Okay. They have the um, Hubble Eureka find. They, they, made, they made a big deal about uh, how they focus in on a dark sp spot in our view of the stars. They, have, they take a dark spot and they claim that they sit, they focus that spot and they, they for many, many, many days. And after a while, they start to see, they start to uh, see something there and they end up by seeing what they say are millions of galaxies and they come up with the most ancient galaxy ever seen and according this was in uh, january of 2011 you know they, they continually change these things um whose light has taken 13.2 billion years to reach us a redshift of around 10. so they get this and no and they, they have it in red because it's so far away that it's redshifted so much. I mean, why, why, does, why does it have to be like that? Why do you have to talk like that? Talk where, where things don't make sense. Time is a, is a basic. Space is a length, width, and depth. That's basic. Why does it have to stretch or contract? A t a t a time. Another one, time dilation. Clocks. Clocks go faster and slower depending on the gravitational place where they're, where they're at. Atom well, they're talking about atomic clocks. And the atomic clocks that are close to the ground are, are in a denser gravity. It makes sense to me that the, os the, the, the oscillations that are... are, are are intrinsic to an atomic clock will be altered in a in a denser gravity. So there are fewer oscillations, and it's not, and it's almost it's almost nothing. But when you go up to where the satellites go, they have to adjust the clocks to be to synchronize to the, to the time on Earth. But again, it's the nature of the clock, not the nature of time. Time didn't change. It's the same time up there as it is down here. And and uh, when I was in, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I have a bachelor of science in, in physics, and I remember, uh, them going over how a, a uh, two guys, uh, one guy gets into an, uh, a spaceship, and he goes out close to the speed of light, and he comes back. According to the guy on Earth, he comes back 20 years later. But he comes back 20 years later, and he, the guy in the spaceship doesn't age. He's still the same, almost the same age as he was when he left. And they do the math, show you the math for that. And um, the guy on Earth, he's 20 years later. He's 20 years older than that guy. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to you? Now, I th I went along with it. I mean, this is my teacher telling me. I mean, I, I believed it. I didn't understand it. I d it didn't make, it did not make sense to me. And, and, and I've, since then, I've seen somebody say things like, well, the guy on Earth was moving away from the guy in the rocket ship. In relativity to the guy in the rocket ship, the guy on Earth was moving away. So why didn't his why wasn't he 20 years younger to the guy who came back? 
Oh, well, this was only a thought experiment, by the way. It's one of Einstein's thought experiments. He never proved anything, and nobody ever has in his theory of relativity. Now, one of the heart, the heart of this theory of relativity was used as, in my firm belief, it was used by the, by the, um, the dark side of science to make sure nobody um, knows about the fact that the Earth does not spin nor orbit because they, they wanted to prove it. And this is back at, from the 18th century to the 19th century at that turn of that time when knowledge was increasing very rapidly and men were getting, you know, um, were wondering if we do spin or we don't spin. And so Mike, Michelson and Morley, two pretty good scientists, and they were good at measuring, and they had this the Fresnel lenses at the time, and um, they were able to t detect greater than the speed of light, the speed of light, and less than the speed of light. And the, the, the Fresnel lens would, would um, have diff a different pattern for each of those. Um, so when they did their experiment, uh, they did not detect any movement of the Earth because they were trying to get Earth was moving towards the, towards the source of that light. So the, the speed of light plus the speed of the Earth was going to add. They, that should have been a lot closer than the speed of, of the Earth moving away from the uh, a source of light, which should have been less than the speed of light. So they had the split, the split mirror, the split lens, and they had a um, very intricate method that made very much sense, and they could not measure a difference. They had no, they could not find a speed of the Earth, whether it's a spinning speed or an orbit speed. They could not, the Earth, they could really not find it. And so Einstein came along with his theory of relativity and said, well, basically what, we, what was being said was, you can't find it because you can't go faster than the speed of light. So speed of light is, is relative, and depending on your observation, you're always going to come up with the speed of light. So you, can, you couldn't measure it because you, you can't measure it. By the way, now they're saying I mean, that the space expands faster than the speed of light so that they can get distant, they can get distant things included in their thoughts. Um, I think that's the reason why they're saying that expansion thing. <laughs> um, so, so nobody recognized that experiment because of Einstein's coming out with this theory of relativity thing. Now, there was a guy named Sagnac who wanted, who wanted to, was, was not sure about what Einstein was saying. He didn't believe it. And so he had, instead of the earth spinning, he had the table spin. And he did the split beam, and he had the mirrors and stuff, and, and he had um, the light going. He had a, he had a control, control speed of light, which was the speed of light. He had the light beam that was going towards the spinning table, and he had the light beam that was going um, away from the spinning table. So what he detected was in the light beam that was going towards the spinning table, it went fast. He found the Fresnel lens indicate it was going faster than the speed of light. Then he had the speed of light um, standard, and then he showed in the Fresnel lens, and then he had the speed of light that was going, was, that was chasing the table, and that was going less than the speed of light. So he proved that Michelson Morley experiment was correct in its in its assumption that it could detect the speed of the Earth. He proved that it could be done, and he proved Einstein to be wrong on his relativity uh, reason. And nobody even mentioned him. I don't know. I didn't know about him until until I see Doctor 
Dr. Philip Stott, S-T-O-T, with two T's, and, and his video was, Where in the Universe Are We? And uh, they point out, they try to point out that the Earth and the Sun, the solar system, are in one of the arms of, the, of a Milky Way galaxy, and the Milky Way galaxy is light years apart, years and years and years apart, and all of, and all of the number of stars that we have in the gal in the in our galaxy. I I think they're trying to imply that if you were able to see our galaxy far far away through a telescope uh, as a single point of light, that the fact that it's a galaxy of stars. Uh, means that you that it's a lot lot brighter uh, that all of the stars within it add and it's a lot brighter than it would be if it was just a single star so the further out you go you're going to only see galaxies of stars be, but and all of their brightnesses add up now that is a fallacy that is a wrong way of thinking because we're i mean according to them we're in the in the uh between the edge and the center of the milky way and we don't see many many suns of brightness in and we're very close to this to, to our galaxy we only see single stars they're all spread out and so that they are going to be all spread out and distant the further you go out. And you're not going to be able to see them because they are only going to be single points of light. And yeah, okay, so we're so far away that all those single points of light looks like one, but it, it, you, you, it don't work that way. It does not work that way. You're going to get the same brightness that you see right now, and all you see right now is the sun very very bright in our galaxy that's it there's a point where they say it's a galaxy is they call it a galaxy because it starts to become unreal that it, we could even see it at, as far away as they're telling us it is so they say okay it's a galaxy and what i'm saying is you can't really say it's a galaxy and therefore it's thousands and thousands of stars and the and it's the brightness of not just one star it's the brightness of thousands of stars a galaxy by definition is little points of stars spread out it's sort of like you look at the the nighttime lights of the cities of the earth and for example you see the the eastern coast of the united states and we could say, well, let's call that a galaxy. Now, that would be a galaxy of many, many, many hundred watt light bulbs. That's, we've got so many of them that, you know, and they're all spread out and you could see it. They're all over. So, so that's a galaxy. It's like a galaxy all spread out. But of all of those hundred watt light bulbs that make it look, that, that we so we can see it at when we're far far away from it we can see it but um, they don't add up they as in it doesn't add up to one point because they by nature they're spread out and if you keep you kept going out and out and out you would you would um, you would lose it okay now let's take a look at <clears throat> what prompted me to to make this video in the first place. I'm looking at the Hubble Space Telescope, what they call the deep space, uh, where they took a spot in space that basically didn't have too many stars, too many points of light, not too much to see in a certain square of the, of the universe that we normally look at. And they did something different where they waited a number of days. And I don't really care how many days they waited. I still don't like, I don't, I don't believe what they're telling, telling us. 
I think they're liars, and they're known to be liars. They don't have a good credibility with me, have all the things that I see as hoax, as lies, as fabrication, uh, 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 just in things, like, like I said, things like dark energy, dark matter, black holes, uh, expansion of space, expansion of time, um, the whole theory of relativity thing, the fact that they denounce the um, Halton up with his with his redshift, pointing out the redshift fallacy of how far away the star is and how fast it's going away from us, how how we had a big bang. All of this stuff I don't buy, and I'm not going to buy this just because there's well dressed people and well sounding people and nice educated. Nice people, nice to hear, nice to talk, nice to do business with, but they're, I think they're being fooled as well. Okay, I'm getting this from spacetelescope.org, and it's slash news slash H-E-I-C-1103. Now, they, they show you the photo of the little square... Uh, the deep field spa space, and um, within that square, you can see um, blue stars, and and there's a little spot in there, another square within it that's got a red sp red star, and they call that um, that's the thing they're pointing out to be um, what they say is the most distant and ancient galaxy ever seen. Now this is back, this was republished back in uh, January of 2011. So let's just read some of it. Astronomers have pushed the NASA slash ESA, European Space Agency, Hubble Space Telescope to its limits by finding what is plausibly the most distant and ancient object in the universe ever seen. Its light has traveled for 13.2 billion years. You notice the point two? Like they know it's not, it's more than 13 and it's not as, it's not 13.7 billion because that's the age of the universe itself. That's when the Big Bang first Big Banged. But um, that number has it, ch it changes depending on who's saying it and when they're saying it. That number go shifts up and down, but um, and it, it, this 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 object had a a redshift of around ten, and 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 says the age of the universe is thirteen point seven billion years. The dim object now it's a dim object, um, and that's because it's so far away. It's called UDF, I guess that's Ultra Deep Field, J-3954-6284. Isn't that a nice name for a star? I mean, God, God knows the stars and he knows their number and he knows them and he gives them names like Betelgeuse, Bet, House, El, God, Uz, Strong. House of God is strong. So that's a name. And it's within a galaxy. What's in it? What's in a, not a galaxy. It's in a constellation. And it's uh, the Orion constellation. And th th this is, this goes into, uh, this is part, the names of the stars and the constellation names have a lot to say. And I have a lot to say about it as well uh, in other in other videos that I do. So I'm digressed, but I have to digress. Look at the name they give this thing. Um, galaxy of, now it's a compact galaxy of blue stars. Now they start out blue, but it ends up red because it's traveling away from us so fast. And now they don't even talk about how traveling away from so fast. They start saying, it, the space is expanding so fast. 480 million years after the Big Bang. 
480 million years after the Big Bang was pretty early for a star to be born. In this case, it's a galaxy. And it, it says only 4% of the universe's current age. It is tiny. Over 100 such mini galaxies would be needed to make up our own galaxy, the, mini, the Milky Way. So this thing is so small, you only need a couple of hundred to make, of that size to make up our, make our Milky Way, is what they're saying there. How do they know this? How do they get their information? Where? Where do they get their information from? Now, I'm gonna go, we're going to talk about how far away they're saying it is, and we're going to use the uh, inverse square law that resides in a brightness as a bright as an as a bright object gets further and further away the its brightness diminishes by the square of the distance away it is so if it's 13 billion years far away from us and a billion light years is a billion light year and each light year is six trillion million six trillion miles trillion is 12 zeros so it's 13 billion times six trillion it's, it's the numbers are so big it's 13 million times six trillion and that's miles right and we need to square that big number because and so we're going to diminish the brightness of of how bright it would be i'm going to work it out in other words the sun has a brightness and it has a distance far away from it that we know and we can calculate how bright the sun is in a square meter that we see on earth and it turns out that calculation turns out to be 1,556 watts per meter squared. So in other words, it's sort of almost, as, it's almost like if you had 1,400 watt light bulbs and you tied them all together and you were standing away, you were standing one meter away from that bundle of light bulbs, you would probably need your sunglasses if you wanted to look at that, the center of, of those bulbs. Um, and that's how bright sunlight appears to us. All right? So we, we have, the sun has its luminosity. They determine the sun's luminosity to be 3.839 times 10 to the 26. It's distance from the Earth in meters. Now, you need to use meters because it's per square meter uh, measurement that we want to get. So it's 149.6 times 10 to the 9th meters away from us. So a light year in meters, now we're going to do the math now of if... If the if this object that they saw 13 billion years billion light years away from us was was as bright as the sun and it's as far away as they're telling us it is how bright would the sun look if it was 13 billion light years away from us now, a light year in meters is 9.461 times 10 to the 15. So that's, a, that's the number, that's the uh, distance that light travels in meters in one year. All right? Now, the distance we said was 13 billion light years. So it would be 13 billion times... 9.61 times 10 to the uh, 15th. And that comes out to be 
122.408 times 10 to the 24th. Now you got to square that distance. So if you square that distance, the square of 122.408 comes out to be 14,983.7184641515. Now that number times 10 to the 48th, because you had to square 10 to the 24th as well. And that, so all of that rounds out, could be very close to 15 times 10 to the 51 square meters. So you notice that I went from 48, 10 to the 48 to 10 to the 51 because I added three tens and I subtracted, I, I made 14, 14,983. I, I converted that to 15.0. So it would be 15 times, and now you got to add those other three zeros. Uh, so it would be um, 10 to the 51. So F, F is the, um, the flux, uh, the, the, the flux of the light that you see that reaches you at at a certain distance. So the, the formula is flux is equal to the luminosity of the of the object divided by four pi delta I mean distance of the distance it is away from you squared. All right so um, again the luminosity of the sun is 3.839 times 10 to the 26. Now, you divide it by 4 times pi. Pi is 22 sevenths. And you have to, now you have to multiply times that huge square of the distance, which is, becomes to be 15 times 10 to the 51 square meters. So the um, flux, if you do the math, you can see that... Uh, 4 times pi becomes 88 divided by 7. And when you, you multiply that times 15, you get 188.5714, blah, blah, blah. And so to make my numbers easy to, 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 to uh, divide, I multiplied, I made 3.839 equal to 3,839 times 10 to the 23rd instead of times 10 to the 26th. Okay, so now all I got to do is subtract the 23rd from the 51, and the 51 is on the bottom. The 10 to the 51 is on the bottom, so it's being divided by an extremely large number, and therefore the, num the, the net result is going to be very, very small. So when you do that math, you have the flux is equal to 20.358 times 10 to the minus 28 watts per square meter. That's 10 to the minus 28 watts per square meter. An extremely small number. How small is that number? Well, let's go to an even smaller uh, number, which is called the electron volt. Now, one electron volt is the, the energy of one photon. One photon. And that one photon, the energy of one photon, is 1.60217 times 10 to the minus 19 watt seconds. Or another way of saying it is one watt second is equal to 6.28159647120 times 10 to the 18 electron volts. So one watt second is six, basically 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electron volts. So that's how many electron volts you need just to get one watt second 
and you had 10 to the minus 28 watt seconds. So you don't have too many watt seconds there. Okay, so now now if I if I want to find out how much electron volts I have, I multiply the 20.358 I, I I multiply how many watts I had per square meter times what a watt second is and I I I have to divide it to get electron volts. And it turns out that I have 20.358 times 6 0.25415 uh, blah 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 of e to the minus 9 electron volts. And so I round up and that becomes the flux is equal to 1.4 e to the minus 7 electron volts per meter squared second. All right, so what that's saying is you don't even have an electron volt hitting your sensor detector. You haven't even got one electron volt. You have 1.4 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, let's multiply both sides by 10 to the 7. That'll make the luminosity of this object that we see it 10 million times brighter than the sun. And then we will be getting a full electron volt hitting our detector per second. And you're try going to try to tell me, you're going to get enough information to tell me that it's a tiny galaxy that is blue lights and that the, you got did a spectrum analysis to tell me that it has a redshift of 10 and that it's you can take a picture of it and it's red it appears red then that's because it had been so red shifted you're getting all that information hitting your detector at one photon per second because you waited that many days i'm sorry but i'm do i do not believe it I already think that the sun is the brightest star in the universe. And now you're going to try to tell me that you saw one because you waited so many days and you pointed into the deep space and you found an object 10 million times brighter than the sun. And on top of that, you found all those others that you say that you found. I'm uh, I'm sorry, but I I think that you're lying to me. I know I I know the book is true. I know my book is true, but you sound like you're lying to me. Sorry. I mean I I, I just did the math of how dim that thing is that you're saying is so far away, and you're calling you can call it a galaxy if you want, but even if you even if it is a galaxy, it's still Again, it's spread out. All the points of light are all spread out with, with, according to you, thousands of miles, millions of miles apart. According to you, they're millions of miles apart, right? Or hundreds of thousands. Or, or, or 700,000. I don't know. How far apart are they? Well, you don't know, do you? You think, but you know it's a galaxy because there's no way... I mean, the, 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 if the sun was out there that far away, you, you would be waiting, waiting. I don't care how many days you wait. You're not going to get. You're not going to see it. And it says in the Bible, nothing is hid from the heat of that sun. There's nothing. So you're, you're way off. Now, is this because I'm telling you you're way off? Is that going to make you go back to the drawing board? That would be nice, wouldn't it? But you're not going to do that. You're going to keep going. You're going to pretend nobody's ever pointed this. I, I don't know why anybody, nobody's. I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard anybody point this out. I mean, I did the math. I mean, that you do the math. If, if, if this, if, you know, if you're, if you're one meter away from... 1400 watt light bulbs all tied together it would be like the brightness of the sun 
Now you go back one one meter. Now you're two meters away, and you're going to get um, you're going to get two meters squared. So it's going to look like it's a quarter of the brightness that you saw when you were one meter away. And now you go another meter back, and now you're three meters away, or and that squared is the brightness is going to look nine times less bright, nine times less bright. And now you go back, go back another meter. Now you look, go, now you total of four meters. Now you're six, it's 16 times less bright. And you're, you're only in meters now. You're not miles. You're not even, you're not even a, a you're not a kilometers. A th the kilometer is a thousand meters. So a thousand times a thousand is a million. Now it's already a million times less bright. So how many, how bright is it when you, if you're a million, if you're a, just a thousand kilom, if you're a, th a kilometer away from it, which is less than a mile. You are a thousand times a thousand. That's a million. It's a million times less bright. So it's getting dimmer and dimmer. In other words, you're a kilometer away and you're trying to see 1,400 watt light bulbs tied together. And it's very, very dim. But that's the brightness of the sun from one meter away. So you see, you see how you're talking distances that you haven't got you we have not we will never achieve us an instrument that's going to detect uh an electron uh, uh, an electron volt so it's one anyway 1.4 divided by 10 million basically as as bright as the sun 1.4 on the top 10 million on the bottom you're not going to see it. I don't know what they're going to say, what anybody's going to say. I mean, nobody ever, you know, come on, point it out. What am I saying wrong here? Oh, I'll, and don't tell me because it's a galaxy. And don't tell me because it's stretching out space. And therefore, that distance really don't count. That does, stretching out space doesn't count in, in uh, the, dim, the, the square root of distance law. Is that what you're going to try to say? Or there was an antimatter that hit it. I, I don't know. What 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 are you going to say? You couldn't see the spot in the first place, but you you took a camera and you waited a number of days. Now what does that do? That what does that do? The brightness is is measured in uh, watts per square meter, or electron volts per square meter per second. Okay, so anyway, I, I, I'm try I hope I hope that this is shedding some light on the subject of how far away it is and how there's no way it can be that far away. And it and it again it disagrees with what the Bible says. And what the Bible says, I mean most of us Christians, most Christians believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God and he was there right from the beginning and he was there when Moses wrote Genesis and he helped make sure his, his Ruach HaKodesh, his Holy Spirit, made sure that what was written was written correctly. And we have the truth handed down from our Father in heaven who loves us and wants us to know. Jeremiah 31, 9. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. So you see there... He is saying how he loves Israel and he's always going to be there for them 
And I, I read that this was pointed out by Philip Stott. Where are we in the universe, in the geocentricity? And that he's, Philip Stott pointed out that we will never be able to measure heaven. Okay, the, Jeremiah 31, 7. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith. He pointed out that he's saying he's a father, and he'll bring, they're going to weep to him, and he's going to give them some, lead them, he's going to shepherd them. And he's, he makes the statement, if, if you can measure heaven above, and the foundations of the earth be searched out, I will cast them off. And he's not going to cast them off, so you can't do it. But like, like I say, I think you can have a, an, an approximate. You can have a feel for it. You can, you can have a feel to know that the stars are far away, yes. Very far away, yes. But not as far away. And we see them, they have a brightness, a very striking brightness. The, the, heaven, uh, the heaven where the stars are are full of uh, immense amount of energy from, the, from God Almighty. Super amount of energy from God Almighty, like lightning um, arcing in certain spots. The stars are bright very bright and far away but they can't be measured and they are not as far away as these people say and they're not stretch the heaven is not stretching out yes he stretched them out as a curtain as it says in the bible but a curtain once it's stretched out you don't stretch it out anymore and that curtain is being stretched out around us and around the top of us and the bottom of us, but not f away from us. It's already been stretched out. It's not stretching out as we speak. It is not a Doppler shift, a red shift. And as, as, we, as we do the math, you really cannot say that it's that far away. You say happened very in the very beginning, near the very beginning, and you, again, you, the Big Bang doesn't place the Earth as being first, as the story of Genesis does. The Big Bang says the Earth is just one of many stars, and it, 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 the solar system formed somewhere, I don't know, about four and a half billion years ago. And if and the Big Bang started 14 and a half billion years ago. So, so it's um, 10 billion years went by before the Earth is formed, is what they say. And if you want to go by what they say and not by what God says, I, I hope you would take another thought about that, another consideration. I mean, we are talking about your salvation. We are talking about your salvation, whether you believe in him or not. And you obtain the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of the Messiah sent to save you by reading the Bible, the Holy Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. You obtain knowledge that helps you believe in the one who is able to save you, who is able to record your name into the book of life. A very important place to have your name placed. Out of all the lists in this world, I don't care if my name is placed on some Nobel Prize spot. As long as I'm written in the book of life, that's all that matters to me. 
And I'm not written in the book of life because I'm making these videos. I'm written in the book of life because I believe in him. I have read the book, and it, and it, it reinforces the initial belief I had in him. Okay, that's all I have to say on this.